Hi everyone, welcome to the third video on classes and objects in C++ for the Baylor Tutoring Department. In this video, we will continue working on the example from the last video, but add some complexity by adding another constructor and learning about different access modifiers. So we have the same person class as before. However, in the header file, you can now see that I have a second constructor, whereas before I just had this first one with the three parameters. How can we do this? Well, in C++, as with other languages, functions and methods are identified by their name, their parameter list, and their return type. This applies to constructors as well without the return type part. We can have one constructor that takes three parameters and have a completely different constructor that takes two or takes a different order of parameters or parameters of different types and so on. This second constructor is one I've created for a special case, that being a new child being born and entered into the government database. When a child is born, their age is zero. So rather than using the old constructor and passing in zero for the age, we can use the second one, which handles setting the age for us. You can see this implementation in person.cpp right here. So we can see in main, that I've added some code that creates a second person object, which has an age of zero, and then celebrates their first birthday. Let's run that to see what the output looks like. So these first two lines are from the first example. And this third line is from our new child, which is now one year old. So having multiple constructors is cool, but let's switch gears to a different important topic for classes, that being access modifiers. So far in all of our examples, I've specified that all attributes and methods for our classes be public. This means that outside of the person class, their attributes such as age are accessible and modifiable with no restrictions, and their methods such as celebrate birthday are similarly accessible. What if we want to restrict or control access to attributes or methods of a class outside of the class so that we, the programmer, control how it can be used and modified? We have two other access levels for this, one being private and one being protected. You will learn more about the protected modifier later when you learn about inheritance. So for now, let's focus on private. So right now, in main, I could set this child's age to be negative 10 if I wanted to, like so. And this would be totally allowable. But this is pretty ridiculous though, as a negative age really isn't possible. This is an example of where we can and probably should restrict control of a class's attribute. So I'm going to remove this line and in person.h, I'm going to set age to be private. So now that age is private, in main, we cannot access or change age. To allow for accessing or changing age, we must create public methods to allow users to interface with this attribute. So back in person.h here, I'm going to create two public methods, one being an accessor method or getter method to retrieve age, and one being a mutator method or setter method to change this person's age. So I will add int get age as the public accessor or getter method. And I will add a void returning setter called set age that takes a new age for the person. And these are both public. So now in person.cpp, I have implemented the getter and setter right here. For the getter, I'm just returning the age as we don't want to do anything special here. For the setter, however, we would like for it to not be possible for any users of our class to create a person with a negative age. So this is how that looks. If any user passes a negative value in, it will not change the person's age. We can also change the first constructor to use the setter so that they can't bypass this restriction during initialization.
Finally, if we try to compile this, we will see that we have some compile errors because age is now private, specifically looking at line 11 in main.cpp. In this case, we're trying to access age the old way as if it was public, although it is now private, so we must use the accessor, get age. Now, if we compile this and run it, it runs as normal. So that's just one small example for access modifiers. In general, best practice is to make the attributes of a class private and create public accessor and mutator methods to control access to them. Now, if we want to ship the person class to clients, we can package this code up in a library and hand it to them knowing that they cannot give our persons any bad ages. So I hope these videos on classes have been helpful. Of course, we only scratch the surface of what can be done with classes in C++. But in the future, you will learn much, much more and get more comfortable using this construct. Stay tuned for future videos. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true no matter which computer science course you are taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Remember, if you are a currently enrolled Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services. Our tutoring center is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson Building. You will find all the details you need about these services on our website, www.baylor.edu slash tutoring. You may schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online or just drop in during any of our business hours. For more information about our current services, please visit our website. Thanks.